Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at if we are dealing with the convergent alternating series and we know it converges, is it possible for us to approximate what it converges to? And if we do that, can we come up with an error statement? We never want to give an approximation unless we can say how far off we could possibly be. So again, we're going to recall that for an alternating series to converge, it must be alternating and it's got to be decreasing in magnitude and of course the limit as it approaches infinity must go to zero. If that is true, then it converges. That means you can approximate it by some partial sum. You could go out four, five, six, seven terms and say, I think it's approximately equal to this. If you do that, there's going to be an error. Your error is equal to the absolute value of the actual sum minus your approximated sum. And this error is always less than the absolute value of the first omitted term. And this is actually very easy. Um, you just have to figure out what the next term is, and that is your error. So let me show you how to do this. Let's take a look at something that we know converges. We did it in our homework. This is a convergent alternating series. And if it converges, it means it converges to some s. So here we are going to approximate what it converges to. Some sum. Some sum. That's funny. Anyway, all right. So it says, and you will be told how many terms to use. So we're going to use the first four terms. So we are going to say that the sum from 1 to infinity of this alternating series can be approximated by just using some of the first, the first four terms. So let's see what that is. If we plug in a 1 for n, because we're starting at 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, you square the negative 1, it's positive. Then if we plug in a 2, we're going to get a negative 1 half. If we plug in a 3, we're going to get a positive 1 sixth. And if we plug in a 4, we're going to get a minus 1 over 24. There's term number 1, term number 2, term number 3, term number 4. And this works out to be 15 24 with making, making a common denominators. This is equal to 15 24 So there's my approximation, 15 24 I think that that adds up to be 0.625. All right, now there's obviously an error because I left off some terms. Now we can explain why this estimate differs from the actual value by less than 1 over 100. So what we want to do, we want to look at the first omitted term. We plugged in 1, 2, 3, and 4. What's the first term that we omitted? That's going to be 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to say the error is less than the absolute value of negative 1 to the 5 plus 1 over 5 factorial, and it's the absolute value of that, and that's going to equal 1 over 120. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 120. And 1 over 120 is less than 1 over 100 because the denominator is bigger. A bigger denominator makes a smaller number. So I'm showing that there, I'm showing exactly what you asked me to check. I plugged in the first omitted term, I got a number smaller than the error. So we know that this answer is actually only one, a maximum value of 1 over 120 off from the actual answer. So what we can say is that 0.625 minus our error and 0.625 plus our error it's like a plus or minus statement, is going to bound the actual sum. It's either larger than 0.625 by 1 over 120th, or it's less than 0.625 by 1 over 120th. Somewhere in here is, is a where our sum must lie. And I did this on the calculator, and I get 0.616 repeating is the smallest it could be. And 0.63 repeating is the largest it can be. So we know that our sum is actually in between those two values. Therefore, our sum cannot equal 0 0.7, like it's saying here in C. It's got to be some number bigger than 6, 0.616 repeating and smaller than 0.63 repeating. Using only the first four terms, that's actually a pretty good neighborhood. You know, we know it's somewhere in there. That's a pretty good approximation. And an error statement is actually relatively easy. Let's take a look at the other way this can be asked. We, and we could go backwards and we would want to know, what if we want to approximate this summation and we 
we definitely don't want to get an error more than 1 over 1,000. This is the error that we want to be less than that. So your error is less than the absolute value of the first omitted term. That's what the alternating series error is. So I need to know when is my first omitted term going to be less than 1 over 1,000. This is saying, you know, our series here, we're doing absolute values, so you don't have to worry about the negative 1 to the n plus 1. So when is 1 over n to the fourth less than 1 over 1,000? And of course, for this fraction to be smaller, we need the denominator, n to the fourth, to actually be larger than 1,000. Bigger denominators make smaller numbers. So I need to know when is n to the fourth going to be greater than 1,000. And I'm just going to guess and check my way through this. 1 to the fourth is 1, not big enough. 2 to the fourth is 16. 3 to the fourth is 81. 4 to the fourth is 256. We're getting there. 5 to the fourth is 625. Finally, 6 to the fourth is 1,296. The first omitted term we need is the sixth term. Finally, we will get larger than 1,000. So we need five terms so that the first omitted term is the sixth term. So that the first omitted term is term number six. And that's just sort of a guess and check process. Pretty easy error statement, not too, not too difficult. So anyway, that's all for that. We'll have a worksheet, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.